Welcome everybody to Drawn to Create. This is episode 10, the moment you've all been waiting for, the Q and A. The questions and answers, ask me anything, I, I put the message out there and a lot of you came back with some interesting questions. You know, there was a variation of them, some of them I couldn't read because they were spelt wrong, some of them I could read but were very long and that rammed and that's a, a good way to start off this episode but just uh, I'll tell you in advance if you are watching this, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be here for answering these questions but I'm guessing it's going to be quite a long episode so get a drink, get some food, you know, get comfortable comfortable if you are doing some drawing and listening to this then I'm happy to keep you company for a bit whilst you do that drawing. You can listen to this, you can watch it, you can consume it as you may. Maybe you're not even listening to me, maybe you just put this on and then left the house and now I'm just here entertaining an empty house. Who knows, but it doesn't matter. So let's get right into this. I'm going to start off with the questions from YouTube and then I'll move on to the questions that were on Instagram. So the first question is from a person named ha 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 ha. That is actually their username, just ha 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 continuously. Uh, I mean, you really put some thought into that one. But right, the question is, how long do you think these podcasts will last? And if you were to quit YouTube, when do you think that will be? Right, so these podcasts, um, I don't really know, you know, I'm just going to keep doing them in, until everyone gets bored of them and then I'll stop doing them. So if people keep on watching these, then I'll keep on making them. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of like these because it gives me a chance to document the the journey, you know, I, I'm thinking like in a, in a year's time, maybe if I'm still doing this, who knows, uh, I might be talking about other things because I'm in a completely different position in my life and it will be good to sort of go back and I don't know that would be a bit weird if I go back and listen to myself you know that, that I probably won't do that but it's a good way to you know have it there and if I ever want to reminisce I can go back and listen to me complain about how things were um, and things aren't bad you know things are going good so hopefully I can keep on doing this so um, the other part of the question was, if I were to quit YouTube, when do I think that will be? Uh, I don't think I'll ever quit YouTube. I think what would happen is I'd just not upload as often. You know, I wouldn't be as consistent because I probably wouldn't have as much time to dedicate to this. And so I think I'd still always be... I'd always have something on the go. I'll, I'll always be creating something and then when it's ready, I'd just put it out there. And so, yeah, I suppose that would come with some good things as well because I wouldn't be pressured to stick to a schedule. I'd, I'd just be able to really take my time to make something that I'm proud of and then I could just put it out there. And yeah, if I was ever in that position, it's likely because I would have a job and that would be my main source of income and so YouTube would just be something that I do in my free time, uh, which usually it is anyways. But yeah, I hope that answered the question. You know, there is no quitting, there is just priorities and how you order them. Um, anyways, let's move on. Blender Burst asks, are you going to do Inktober? Um, I don't have any intention to do Inktober this year. Um, I say it as if I've done it in the past, I haven't. And that's just because I, I don't really draw much in pen and I know that I'm always encouraging people to try new things so maybe one year I will but I just don't really have the time to do a pen drawing every day even if it's something small I suppose. I could but I just don't really have the incentive to do so at the moment but it's probably something I'll do in the future. Um, I know that a lot of people enjoy doing that and it's definitely something that I find uh, you know, quite a, a cool concept. People can take part in it and, and post their work on Instagram or whatever. Um, but October is the year where your Instagram feed will be flooded with pen drawings. So I don't really want to add to that. Let let me just continue posting some pencil drawings and I'll be the guy that's like pencil turbo man, not ink turbo. Um, anyways, next question is from GMS9810. Also, on a side note, I am going to try and include your name. Uh, I'll try and pronounce it, but I'll probably get it wrong pretty much all the time. So uh, I apologize for that. But your question is, you have such a cool accent. What is it? 
ah, finally, someone who actually likes my accent. You know, it's it's uh, it seems to be quite subjective. It's one of those where my words sometimes don't even come out like normal words. Sometimes you have to sort of decipher what I'm saying. I know that when I make a tutorial, some people are uh, trying to translate what I'm saying into normal English because I tend to have this accent which uh, just misses out letters and misses out certain words and sentences are strung together that only make sense to people who are you know who live where i do um and i live in a a small city in england um and a lot of people don't really do this sort of stuff here um it's quite uncommon to be on youtube and so that's probably why you might not have heard an accent like mine before. Also, if you combine it with my monotone voice where I'm sometimes pronouncing things slowly and calmly. You know, I'm surprised a lot of you don't fall asleep listening to this. Or, or maybe you do, you know, maybe that's why you listen to this so you can get some sleep. Uh, but yeah, my accent is pretty subjective. Some people complain, some people like it, but I can't really help it. You know, it's just one of them things that I have to work with. And uh, yeah, I try to be just, I try to talk normally. Um, I, I don't really try and come at the camera with any, uh, you know, overly energetic vibes. I just try and be natural with it. Um, I used to think that like to do YouTube, you had to be really, you know, boisterous and, and, and shout at the camera and stuff, which I suppose you do in a, in a way because, um, you know, it, it keeps it entertaining and stuff. But for a podcast, I feel like I'd just be tired out and drained by the end of it um, because it's not natural, you know, you need to... People don't interact like that. Obviously, when they're on camera, they're putting on a, a show or a facade, right? And so that's why they are being like that. But you can't be like that in, in real life. And I sort of want to come across like I would in real life. And that's uh, pretty important to me to try and be genuine, you know, and uh, that's something I value a lot as I've been doing this for a while now. Um, but anyways, let's move on to another question. Andre asks, what is your favourite way to motivate yourself to practice? And do you have any tips in motivating oneself to stay consistent with practices, etc.? A uh, good question. Um, what do I do to motivate myself to practice? Um, I, I don't, you know, if I'm going to be honest, I think it's the fact that I make these videos and I do YouTube, you know, because it sort of gives me, it gives me a reason to do it. It's sort of like a responsibility. And so if I don't do it, then I'm not able to do this. And so I need to do this, you know, I don't really have the option of not doing it. And I suppose if you're in that sort of mind frame, then you're always going to have something that pushes you to do it whereas if you you, you don't really have to do it um, and instead of practicing drawing you have the option to I don't know go play some video games or something then you, you might be tempted to do that because we, we don't like to voluntarily practice because sometimes practicing is is boring you know it, it's easy to just sit there and uh, procrastinate and do all of that stuff and so I do understand why sometimes it's hard to motivate yourself to practice and uh, before I even started YouTube I think what motivated me then was the idea of improvement you know getting better at something and then seeing where it goes because it's unknown at the minute you don't know how good you will get and you don't know what that will lead to so the unknown sort of excited me and uh, I knew that if I just got better at this then it could go in other directions and it might open up you know different opportunities that were not there before I started practicing and getting better and so you sort of have to it's it helps to lay out a plan you know if you have a plan and you sort of vaguely have an idea of where you're going with it then you can sort of aim at something and again it, it just has to be vague because along that journey along the process who knows where it will go but keeping open-minded to all of these things and sort of experimenting with things and, and letting it take you wherever it goes um, is exciting and that can be motivating as well so practicing yeah try and really focus on improvement and if you can recognize that you are improving that will just inevitably motivate you as well because you are seeing the progression and that's always 
encouraging, you know, that will help push you forward. And so that's what um, I'd try and focus on. And yeah, that sort of answered the last part of that question as well. You say, how do you stay consistent with it? Um, it helps to just turn up every day, you know, it's important to be consistent because if you are only doing it once a week, then you are not going to be improving as fast. And that's just obvious, but also I'd really try and just view it as something that you don't have to do, but something that you get to do. You know, it's something that you should enjoy. It shouldn't be this tedious thing that you have to force yourself to do. You should try and sort of make a, a schedule or try and involve it in your day in a way where you can sort of enjoy it a bit more. Like if you're going to practice, just tell yourself that you're going to practice for half an hour and then play video games or something. Because then once you start, you're probably going to end up doing more than half an hour anyways. You know, it's just the thought of doing it which turns us off a lot of the time, but once we actually start doing it, we find out that it's not as bad as we originally thought it would be. So just try and throw yourself into it, get started, and then you'll probably just be motivated once you start anyways, if you have a clear idea of where you are going with it. Um, but yeah, I hope that answered your question. The next question is from Golden Knight, and they ask, who is your favourite artist? So... At the moment, well, I've never really had a favourite artist, you know, I've always just appreciated a wide selection of artists' work, and um, there's not really one in particular that I can say is my favourite. To name a few artists, you know, there's Jeff Darrow, I really like his work, it's very detailed, a lot of the stuff he draws, um, it can be quite violent. I actually follow him on Twitter, and he put a tweet out the other day saying that he did some work for the new John Wick film, John Wick 3, and they didn't let him put it out there because it was too violent, or I think that was the reason why, which doesn't really make sense to me, like I don't really know what happened there because that film is violent anyways and apparently his work, his drawing that he did, or that the illustration that he did was too violent, um, but yeah that's a shame because no one is going to get to see this work that he did and his work is really worth looking at because it's so detailed, but it's executed perfectly, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate the detail in his work as well, and the small little things that you can notice when you look at his work. He uh, did a lot of illustrations for comics and stuff, and he also worked on the, the Matrix films. I think he's working on the new one as well, which has recently been announced, so I'm looking forward to seeing that work. Um, you know, some other artists, Cal Kapinski, he's pretty good. He's a bit like uh, Kim Jung-gi in the way that he approaches his work. He sort of seems to draw directly, you know, he doesn't really do any preliminary sketching beforehand. He just jumps right in and starts drawing, and that's impressive. Uh, Kim Jung-gi as well, but I feel like that's an obvious one. Everybody knows about that guy. Um, James Jean, he's pretty good. And there's just, you know, there's loads of artists out there on Instagram that you can look at. And uh, I, I'm struggling to name a few from the top of my head, but there's probably a lot more out there, you know, um, great artists. And today there's so many of them and we can just see their work easily online. And so, I don't know, I have like a, a weird attitude, for lack of a better word, towards this stuff um, and that might sound quite weird but let me just try and explain right because you know I don't try and look at artists work too often because I don't want to be influenced um, and in inspired isn't really the right term to use because being inspired is different but I don't want to be influenced by another person's creation right so an example is if you look at an artist's work, you might get an idea by looking at that for your own work, and that's all good and everything, but I try not to um, let other people's work be the source of my own inspiration and ideas for my work, if that makes sense. Like, I want to be inspired and influenced by my own experiences and interactions with, with life. I, I don't want it to be a result of me looking at someone else's interpretation of things and uh, actually I don't know because I suppose it's not a bad thing at all like wherever ideas come from it doesn't really matter as long as what you produce from them is different from where the idea came from you know in terms of looking at another person's work you don't want to copy another person's work because then that is just recreating 
their sort of interpretation of something then uh, but if you can take something away from that like a thought or an idea and that results in you creating something um that isn't really available or that hasn't been done before and um, then that's fair enough and I, I suppose i'm contradicting myself a bit here but i hope you get what i mean I, I, like I, I don't want to be influenced too much by what other people are doing because then i feel like i'm sort of going off the path a bit i feel like what i'm creating isn't a direct personal response you know um I guess I'm just talking more in terms of like YouTube in general is an example. Um, I try not to watch many other artists on the platform because if I see what they're doing and it's getting a good response, then I'll probably question why I'm not doing that. And, you know, that's a you, you have to consider these things, but I don't want to change my sort of course because of another person's uh doing you know because everyone's in their own lane and uh, you shouldn't it, it's like when you compare yourself with other people right you everyone's in their own lane and you you don't know what another person is is doing or what goes on behind the scenes for them to create something right and you can never really there's no such thing as um a, a, there's really no such thing as a, an original idea because everything stems from something like we are inspired by all of these different things and even when i listen to some music you know that can spark up an idea and then i can carry that through and start to create some work as a response to that and yeah you know all of these things come from different places but you know going back to the artwork and the artists uh it's good to be inspired by a person's style but a lot of the time, I know that I did this at the start when I first started drawing, I used to copy a lot of artists' work, you know, comic book artists, I used to sit there and draw them, and I actually think I learned something from doing that, you know, I learned to practice how to control a pencil and move it and create lines in a similar way to a professional artist, and, uh, you know, there was probably some progression from doing that but there comes to a point where you need to start involving yourself a bit more and so that's something that I try and do I try and look inwards to, to myself and think about what it is that I want to create rather than looking at other people's creations and seeing what happens with their work as a result you know like it's none of my business what other people are doing. I mean, I can spectate and and look at it from the outside, but that's all it is, right? So I don't know. I'm probably just rambling on a bit, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from, even though I might not understand where I'm coming from myself. And I'm probably contradicting myself, but that's that's just part of drawn to create, right? You know what you are getting into when you click that play button. Anyways, let's move on to the next question. The next one is from Andrew Marlowe. He asks, how do you avoid falling into the trap of always creating or practicing the same thing as an artist? Also, do you think the old masters are overrated? As in, do you think we put way too much emphasis on them when there are modern artists living today doing great things also? That is a, a very good question and I'll answer the first part first um how do i avoid falling into the trap of creating practicing the same thing um I, I try and sort of like document what it is that i'm working on and usually it's not that much i mean if i have videos to make throughout the week if i'm practicing perspective and then making a video for it then i usually have a list and i work through a list and I, i've recently I, I think i've mentioned this before but i've recently been uh keeping like a a journal you know and writing things down um every day what it is that i'm doing and just listing the things that i need to complete each day um, and it's really helping me manage my time and just keep track of what i'm doing and what i need to do and that's probably why i'm able to you know try and keep the consistency up with the content and the things that i'm creating you know i've recently started patreon and so i'm able to schedule the content in for that and uh, I just make a list each day and then I try and work through that. And if I don't complete that list, then I just add the stuff on to the next day. Um, but keeping a record of what it is you are doing 
is probably uh, very helpful, especially when it comes to just practicing. Like if I didn't have to make all of these videos and do all of this stuff, and I only had time to practice, then uh, I suppose it's quite easy to remember what it is that you practiced the day before um, and try and create like a list for yourself, like a roadmap, you know, because you don't have to practice things you don't have to order it in a linear way, you know, you don't have to practice this one thing before you practice this, this other thing. You can take things from different areas and practice multiple things at once. For instance, if you are studying anatomy, maybe do that one day and then the next day try doing some work in perspective, you know, and practice that or colour or something. Just choose different subjects and sort of vary them throughout the week so that you aren't getting bored either. But then uh, another good way to really hammer something is to just put in a lot of hours one day on one thing or maybe even the whole week just try and do one thing for the whole week until it's embedded in your mind you know um when i was drawing a lot from my imagination and trying to get better at that i pretty much forced myself just to uh, you know, I had some music on and stuff in the background, but I wasn't looking at anything on screen. I was just looking at the paper and I was just forcing myself to use my own imagination to draw what it is that I wanted to draw. And that was challenging because I was, I've spoke about this in the past as well. You know, I was so used to using only reference images and doing a lot of realistic drawing that way. Um, but eventually I got used to it and I started doing that and I was practicing that. And I, um, I started to involve it into my schedule a bit more. Uh, sometimes I, st I still, because I have the realistic rendering tutorials on Patreon, you know, I'm still finding the time to study um, and draw from photographs. So observational drawings, I still find the time to do that. And so I'm still doing that so that I will never forget it. Because if you don't practice something for a while, you might not forget it, but you'll be less uh you know um familiar with it when you return to it and so that's why it's important to try and draw every day and if you are practicing every day definitely keep a record of what it is you are practicing and maybe again try and create like a, a road map for yourself with an end goal you know maybe you want to get better at drawing one specific thing so have that as your end goal and then sort of set out your road map of how to get there and then you can work through that and you know how to manage your time and your days correctly and um, a lot of it is to do with planning and that's one thing that i've realized if you plan in advance then you really will save time a lot of the time people might assume that because you are having to plan all of this stuff that it's going to take more time to do something every day. But that's not the case. By planning stuff, you actually save time because you prevent mistakes and you have a, a better understanding of what it is that you need to do. So the second part of the question was, do you think old masters are overrated? And you're asking in terms of like how much emphasis we put on them especially when there's a lot of artists that are living today that are probably, you know, just as skilled as them. And we can probably learn a lot of things from the artists that exist today just as much as we can when we look at older artists. But I feel like the reason why older artists are appreciated, you know, the old masters, it's because they went through that process of, of learning in a time where it wasn't as easy to do so. I mean, like in the in the Renaissance, Brunelleschi and stuff, Da Vinci, they were finding out things. They were discovering perspective and, you know, learning about anatomy. And there was the the people that set out to do this. And if it wasn't for them, you know, I think we would have somehow gotten it anyways. But we wouldn't have as much, you know, knowledge about those things as we do today. But we probably would have because, I mean, we, we would eventually discovered it some other way. Um, but the way that technology has improved as well alongside the arts it's just opened up a lot of opportunity and there's creatives out there and artists that are taking advantage of all of these tools that were not available back then we are living in a time where you know we are living amongst masters today they're just the modern day masters and we will probably be able to appreciate them more and, and recognize them and what it is that they did all of that stuff will be a lot clearer in a few centuries time when we can look back and really see 
the impact and influence they had. And I mean, in every profession, there's always people looking back at those that came before them and studying what they did. Because in a way, we need to know what came before us so that we can build on top of that. And uh, it's so we live in a time that is so vastly different in comparison to when these old masters were working that it is hard to compare. And, you know, it is hard to recognize the value that is there. You know, if you're into art, history and stuff, you might be able to shed some more light on this subject. But we can appreciate the fact that these old masters went out there into the world and made an effort to discover all of this stuff that we still use today. And again, in terms of technology and all of these new tools that are presenting themselves today, there's artists out there that are trying to push the boundaries and utilize these tools to improve what it is that they create. And that's just uh, striving for improvement. And that's pretty much what all of these old masters did back then in their time. They set out to learn all of these new things and to see what they could do with them. And that's just the same as what artists are doing today, like digital art when that came around and people were using Photoshop for the first time. There was probably concept artists and creatives that jumped into Photoshop and created something for the first time that nobody had ever seen before. And then that went on and influenced digital art as a result. You know, there's people that do that and they are the first ones to do it which sets uh, a precedent for people who would then go on to build on that and continue to explore and try and discover all of these new things. And so that just happens really quickly today. I feel like there's always new things coming out and there's artists out there that create some just incredible things that were not possible back then. But it's still that same pursuit. It's that sense of discovery and need to push things further. You see, I really don't think there is much emphasis placed on old masters. When someone goes to learn art, if they go to an art school today or something, a lot of it is based on where the industry is going, what's relevant to an artist today. And they are studying artists that are working today and pushing the boundaries. Art and technology, it's moving really quickly and so a lot of artists I feel like sometimes they don't have time to look back as much because they are constantly having to evolve and move with the times and learn these new things and you know there's probably a time and place for learning about the old masters maybe in the subject of art history or something and we can definitely appreciate them but there's like I said I don't think there is a lot of emphasis placed on them I think it's all it's all moving forward. What can we create next? What artist is doing something with this today? So that kind of answers that question, right? <laughs> um, let's move on to the next one. This one is from MXXVIVB. Um, they say, hi, I hope you are also having a good weekend. What did you do this weekend? Did you work or did you get some rest? I have one question for you. Do you, wait, you asked me a load of questions a second ago. Uh, anyways, um, do you ever feel like you can't draw anymore? And if so, what do you do then? Can't wait for the videos. Well, thanks for watching the videos and taking the time to leave a question or questions. Um, I'll start with the first one. Hope you are also having a good weekend. What did I do this weekend? Did I work or get some rest? Um, I did a bit of both. I uh, did some work and I also got some rest by I played the new Call of Duty game the the beta was out on PS4 the beta is where you get to try the game before it comes out and I had pre-ordered this game because it looks like a good Call of Duty you know I'm not usually uh, the type of person to play those sort of games or I haven't since I was a, a lot younger but this one looks different and so I thought I'd put it on pre-order so that I could play the beta and it was good you know so I played that for a bit uh, on the night and on the day I was just doing some work you know I was working on another perspective tutorial I've also been working on a new drawing and um, th that's probably the drawing that you are seeing on this video uh, I'm trying out some new things you know combining reference images with 
my imagination and just trying to create a good looking image you know I've, I've sort of realized that I am in the business of image making and so I will produce a good image at all cost and I want that image to uh, you know also showcase my style my interests my um, ability and stuff so I'm just experimenting with stuff recently and then I've also got the ongoing like projects that I'm trying to work on and then the patreon stuff and so yeah I've just been trying to sort of work my way through all of that stuff and then yeah on the on the night I was playing some video games for a bit with my mates and then yeah that's pretty much my weekend you know and here I am Monday morning recording an episode of this because this goes up the following Sunday and so I try and record this in advance so that I can get the drawing footage ready for it and, ev and everything and then the tutorials are I'm sort of just working on them over over the week so yeah I hope that answers that question um do I ever feel like I can't draw anymore and if so what do I do then well first of all all the time sometimes I feel like you know why am I doing this do I deserve to be doing this should I really be giving advice because am I good enough myself you know all of that stuff it, it just comes with it I've realized that the best thing to do is just accept it and smile <laughs> um no but it's it again it's it's almost it's that self-doubt and I, I did a like an episode talking about stuff like this it's just um it's just part of being human you know and it's how you approach that stuff and how you handle it that that matters like your perspective um no pun intended either i know this is a, a drawing podcast but when i say perspective i mean how you view things uh anyways yeah it, it's just um if you feel like you cannot draw it's probably because you're just having a bad day and uh, maybe you are struggling to draw one thing that doesn't mean that you cannot draw at all it just means that you are having an off day recently that happened to me i was drawing for like for a lot of hours every day um i did a realistic rendering tutorial on patreon and i had drawn this this uh I did the tutorial where I had drawn the tank and I did this drawing on some A5 paper and then I realized that I should have probably done this drawing on A4 paper because it's quite detailed and so I decided to do it again and then straight as soon as I had finished that drawing again I had uh, to do some drawing for an episode of this and so I was drawing pretty much every day for hours um, which isn't uncommon but sometimes when you are doing all of this all of this stuff for the purpose of a tutorial or a video and it's not really something that I'm doing for my own enjoyment even though I do enjoy doing it it becomes more like work and it gets quite tedious and um and yeah it just takes its toll and like I said in the previous episode recently I've uh, been ill and so that was you know bothering me as well I was sort of ill whilst I was trying to get all of this drawing done and all of this stuff just came together and I was feeling a bit drained and uh, I didn't really have much motivation to draw you know I was pretty much just wanting to lay down all the time because I didn't feel very well but then uh, like on the other hand I was feeling guilty because I knew that I, I had all this stuff to make and stuff to do uh, and you know that's just part of doing all of this but again it, it gets on, on top of you and sometimes the, the best thing that I do is I, I just decide that I need to take a break and I take a break and that's what it comes down to and um, if, if I'm not able to draw very good one day then I'll just stop drawing and I'll maybe edit some videos or do something else or I'll I'll look at uh, I don't know I'll just study a bit and, and read up on something rather than actually drawing or sometimes I I do force myself to draw a lot of the time but it's not like I'm really in that flow and mood when I'm doing it you know because if you are feeling the urge to draw and then you start drawing you sort of get into it and over time you get into that flow and it just becomes something that you are doing because you really enjoy doing it in comparison to uh, sort of feeling like you have to do it again it's like when I talked about practicing earlier in this episode also because I'm saying stuff like take a break if you feel like you uh, cannot draw or if you are struggling to draw that day maybe you need a break I want to say that do not be too quick to give up and, and quit and have that break because 
sometimes it might just take a bit of time to get into it, right? And your mind is creating this resistance because it knows it's something that you should do. Uh, but again, procrastination, all of that stuff comes into play. And that excuse that you give yourself where it's, I can't draw today, I'm going to have that break. That justifies itself in your head, but that's not really the case. That's just an excuse, an easy excuse to use and get yourself out of doing what it is that you need to do and what you can do. And so sometimes I have difficulty working out whether I I really do need a break or whether I'm just being being a little bitch, you know, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, again, like I said, it's an easy excuse. And so if I like when I was ill, I knew that I needed that break. And so I wasn't feeling guilty about it. But sometimes I take a break when I know not that I shouldn't take a break because a break is important. But I guess what I'm saying is I I took that break almost as a form of procrastination to escape the things that I know I should do because because of resistance. You know, I've spoke about it before. That book by Stephen Pressfield, The War of Art, Resistance, the stuff that stops us from doing what we need to do. Um, it's all around us and it comes in different forms and so we need to fight against it. And sometimes, you know, the guilt sinks in when I know that I have been defeated. Again, yeah, so I hope that kind of helps. Just take a break, but make sure you give it a good go before you take that break. And man, I feel like I need a break right now. Answering all these questions and having to think, it's uh, it's tiring. But the next one is from Blade of Night. I know you've talked about this in some of your videos, but what was your past on drawing slash illustration like? Besides the details you've mentioned. Knowing my luck, the question probably got answered at some point. Also, if you wanted to find a new way to draw something, how exactly would you come up with that method? Last question, how was your day? Thanks in advance for answering our questions and your hard work. Well, thank you for taking the time to leave a question, Blade of Night. I appreciate it. And um, I think the first question was, how was my past with drawing and illustration? Um, yeah, I've spoke about this before. I don't think anyone's asked this question yet, though. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've been... I've always been interested in drawing and, and like I've said in the past, uh, there was times in my life where I didn't draw as much as I did in others. Um, you know, going through school and stuff, I was easily distracted and uh, I was just growing up. I was just figuring out what it is that I really liked and what it is that I wanted to do. And drawing was always something that I was, you know, attracted to and I would do it often. But um, it was only later on in life when I realized that drawing is something that I want to pursue seriously and I want to try and really do something with it. Um, that's not to say I couldn't draw when I was younger because I was still drawing and, you know, without sounding pretentious or anything, people would often refer to me as the, the, the guy that would draw in school, you know, and that probably um, encouraged me to keep on doing it because then when I would show my parents and stuff and family and friends my artwork, they would often uh, compliment it because obviously they're going to they're not going to say like that's shit <laughs> even though that'd be quite funny um and so obviously that was encouraging me to carry on doing it and um yeah i just carried on drawing and i'd eventually get to the point where i'd take it seriously which was in when i left uh college pretty much and i realized that i need to get get my shit together and do something you know i can't just be wandering around aimlessly through life, not ever figuring out what it is that I like doing or what I should be doing, because a lot of people do that. So my intention was to figure it out early or as early as possible, and then I can base my life around it. I'm not sure if you was asking for anything specific with that question, but that's some kind of an answer. <laughs> the next part of the question was, um, if you want to find out a new way to draw something, how exactly would you come up with that method? Uh, that's that's a bit of a strange question because there's not really one way to draw one thing. There's one way to draw everything, right? Um, you know, you you have to learn the the basics, the fundamentals. You have to learn perspective. Um, if you're drawing people, you need to learn. It's good to have an understanding of anatomy. Uh, there's all of these things which come into play. And if you have an understanding of those things, then 
you can apply that knowledge when you draw anything. If you want to draw one thing, then yeah, I suppose you could get some photographs and some reference images of what it is that you want to draw. And then by observing these photos, you can create some small studies, some sketches, you know, rotate the object on different angles or whatever it is that you are drawing, draw it repeatedly on different angles, learn as much about it as you can, and then start to remove the photographs and rely on your own visual library. And your visual library is pretty much reference images which are stored in your head that you can call upon when you are drawing from imagination. And then that's when all of the fundamentals come into play, when you need to take this image and understanding of this object or whatever it is in your head and put it on paper and start to draw it in perspective. And yeah, that's a, a good way to learn how to draw one specific thing from memory. But in terms of drawing anything, it's good to have an understanding of those fundamentals. And you don't need to know everything. You only need to know a little bit about everything. Um, if you have a basic understanding, then that should be good enough, depending on what it is you are doing. Uh, it really does depend on what you want to do. Maybe you are just drawing from photographs, observational drawing, which is fair enough. Or maybe you want to draw from your imagination, which then requires you to learn a lot about those fundamentals but i hope that answered that question the last part of the question was how's your day and my day is going great it's going fine i've been recording this for a while now my throat's a bit dry but we have some we have a lot of questions to get through and we're not taking any shortcuts on this one so let's get on with it next question is from hanley illustrate i've probably pronounced your name wrong there so i apologize but you ask, do you have any siblings that have the same talent as you? Do you have a GF, <laughs> a GF girlfriend? Are you going to do more of this soon? Um, right, so let's go through these. Do I have any siblings? Yes, I have a, a sister, one sister, a younger sister. And is she as talented as me? Well, um, nah, she's, she's not talented, really. She's good at stuff. I don't, I don't really believe in talent anyways. But that's a, another subject for another day. Um, but she's good at stuff. You know, she was always considered the one who uh, excelled at mathematics and all of the logical stuff. And I was the, the kid who painted pretty pictures in the corner. So that was me. Um, but then as we grew up, she she started getting into some certain stuff that she enjoyed. You know, she studied uh, law. She's into all of that stuff. And I have no idea about any of that stuff. So... We're pretty different, but yeah, I have a sister. The next part was, do you have a GF, a girlfriend? And no, I don't. The last part of the question is, are you going to do more of this soon? And yeah, I will, if, um, if, if you want to see more of them. So thanks for the question, Hanley. The next one is from Teresa Del Pila. Sorry if I got the name wrong. Uh, hello, now that you have a degree on something that is not related to visual arts, Wait, I did architecture. That's uh, that's pretty visual, but I'll finish the question. What are your career plans? Are you going to go a hybrid route and combine incomes from both? Or are you going to focus on one career path only? Just curious about your thoughts and plans for the future. Well, thanks for the, the question, Teresa. Um, yeah, architecture is pretty visual, you know, it's, it's designing buildings. Nah. But I get what you're saying. The The art and the drawings which I create are separate from the architecture right i get that so um in terms of career plans like at the moment i'm just pursuing this stuff you know the art the drawing and the the youtube i've, I've started patreon and so that's a, a source of income and then obviously i get some money from making these videos and hopefully i'll be selling artwork eventually um i still sell some prints now but i'm going to try and get on top of that and start selling some art once i have developed my style a bit more and got something down that i'm confident with and i'll just brand that and I'm, I'm pretty much just in the process of trying to do this and again it's a it's a long process it's something that takes a lot of you know experimentation and i'm just exploring all of these different things because you see i think i'm in a position in my life right now where i have some opportunities and options and i don't just want to 
rush into one thing. I want to take my time and make sure I'm going to be doing something that I really feel passionate about. And I know that I feel passionate about making content and doing all of this. And so if I want to take maybe a few years out or a, a bit of time to try and pursue this, then I can do. And then if I feel like it gets to the point where I need to get a, a job, then I can do that as well. You know, there's not there's not one way to go about doing this. A lot of the time, I feel like, uh, you know, the common path is laid out for everyone where it's leave uni, get a job, work, buy a house, have a family, start a family, get married, all of that stuff. And sometimes, you know, there's different ways of going about living. There's not just one way to do it. And some ways might be unconventional, and I feel like what I want to do and what will make me happy will depend on me having some kind of a unconventional lifestyle, even if that means, you know, struggling a bit. But that's just part of it, because being, you know, I feel like if I'm going to try and be an artist and do all of this stuff, and I don't even know if that's what I want to do yet, but if that is, then... You know, th this is the price that I'm willing to pay. And so I suppose I'm tied between, you know, taking the, not the easy option, but the safe option where it's get a job and do all of that stuff. And then the the other option is go for it, dedicate your life to it, struggle and, and, and get by day by day and trying to do this. And I feel like that second option is a lot more exciting. If my, if my life was a movie, then you'd probably want the main character to take that second option and try and do all of this stuff because then stuff happens along the way you know if, if you take the safe option and then that's going to be a bit boring but I don't know I'm just taking it as it goes at the minute and um, yeah I should probably make more of a, a clear plan for the next few years of my life you know because that's what I, I keep talking about planning in advance and I'll do that I do have a, a vague idea but I don't want to say it because I don't want to put it out there and make it permanent because it's something that I'm likely to change along the way. So thank you for that question. On to the next one. Now this one's quite a long one and it's a question from B Hells and they say, Hey Dan, I'm curious. I have a question about self-doubt. As someone who suffers with an on and off relationship with drawing, I wondered if you could help. I want to start drawing more, being as it's something that I've been doing on and off for a few years, usually having bouts of about three to four months of it and then stopping for long periods of time due to real life issues, often feeling like the things I learnt prior to stopping I forgot entirely. But it seems the later on in life I start back up, I keep finding more resistance to practicing it. I find more and more reasons why I shouldn't draw or tell myself these reasons. How have you dealt with such doubt in the past if you have yourself suffered with it? Or how would you suggest dealing with it? Thanks for your time and keep up the great work. Your channel is one of the few that generally gives us hope. Well, thank you for those kind words at the end and thank you for taking your time to leave a question. So you say you want to start drawing more and that you usually draw for about three to four months and then you stop for long periods of time. Um, and so obviously you feel like you are forgetting what you learn when you are drawing for three to four months, which is going to happen, you know, like I said earlier, um, if you stop doing what you are doing for a long period of time, then when you return to it, things are going to be a bit unfamiliar. You will be able to get back into it, but it's going to take a bit of time. And if you are just constantly starting and stopping, then you're not doing yourself any favours. You are constantly trying to build momentum and get the ball rolling and then you're stopping and then you are starting at square one again and you're trying to get that ball moving again. So you need to build the momentum and keep it going. It's kind of like an old steam train, right? You are shoveling coal into the engine to keep it going. That's what you need to do with drawing. You need to keep putting coal into the engine and keep on top of it. And I mean, you don't have to draw for hours every day, just return to it maybe every, you know, every so often, even if it's a, a few days a week, or maybe even if it's just a week, just try not to um, make those periods of time where you are not drawing too long to the point where when you return to it, you feel like you have to, like I said, get back into it again, because if you are constantly restarting, then again, like you're not really moving in any direction and you want to do it. So you just have to try and involve it into your 
daily routine. If you really want to do it, you will find time to do it, to draw. Um, and you say that, you know, because of real life issues, you are having long periods of time where you cannot draw and life just gets in the way, but we can still work around that. Um, you know, life is something that is unavoidable. There's always going to be things that happen that stop you from, you know, pursuing things as often as you'd like, but you can work around it. Think of a solution and apply it to your life. You know, you're, you're creative. If you like drawing, you're creative. I'm sure you can come up with some way to work around these problems if you want to do it that much. And you say that every time you try and restart drawing, you feel this resistance. And I think that resistance is just because, like I said, you, you are trying to restart. And so starting is the hardest thing. I've said this before. And if you are starting something which is hard, then there's going to be a lot of resistance. And you are constantly returning to that starting point where resistance is there in, in full force, you know, trying to trying to stop you and so if you can get past that first hurdle then you can build the momentum and keep going with it whereas if you keep having to restart then you are always going to be face to face with that resistance and I'm guessing that as you get older that might be you know that resistance might be stronger because you seem to have more responsibilities as you get older and so that probably doesn't help either. In terms of a solution like I said it's quite simple just start and then don't stop. And you don't have to do it every day if you really can't, but even if you if you want to, you'll figure out a way to do it. You will. And you'll you'll be able to even if you have to carry around a sketchbook with you, you know, if you have ten minutes, do a little sketch. Do as much as you can in your power to find the time just to put pencil to paper and do a little sketch of something, something that's in front of you, it doesn't matter as long as you are engaging with drawing and keeping it present in your life. Okay, so we're coming up to an hour now, but I'll do one more question from YouTube and then I'll move over to the Instagram questions. And if I haven't answered your question, then I apologize. But if you want to just leave your question on uh, future episodes of this podcast in the comment section, then I usually answer one question each episode from from a viewer so be sure to do that if I haven't got to your question yet um okay so this last question is from uh, I'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing this name but it's Firuz Mahmud I've probably got that completely wrong but I apologize thanks for the question which is hey Dan tell us something about your music taste um you know I have the most varied music taste ever like there's not one specific genre of music that I listen to. Honestly, like it ranges from everything there is out there to some really weird stuff as well sometimes. It just depends on how I'm feeling in the moment, you know? And I can pretty much find some enjoyment in anything that I listen to. A lot of the time when I am drawing, I enjoy listening to electronic music. Um, some really, There's some really creative like sounds out there and some tracks that people make from a lot of the time I don't even know the artists that I'm listening to I just usually put on like a a compilation or a something that appears on YouTube and I click play and I just listen to that and sometimes there's some really unique sounds in in this electronic music that can spark up an idea or it goes along with whatever it is that I am drawing or working on. And I suppose it also depends on the setting. For instance, if I'm at my desk drawing, then I might listen to that sort of stuff. Whereas if I'm in the gym, then I, I might put on something that's a bit more upbeat. Uh, if I'm just out for a walk or something, I might put on something that's a little less intense. You know, it, it just depends. I have a, I'm open to all kinds of, of music and music has, it's always been something that, I've never really obsessed over, but I've always appreciated and I've always, you know, been listening to a wide range of things since I was younger. Um, and yeah, it, that's pretty much my music taste. I don't really have one. I, I'll just listen to anything. Okay, so now it is time to transition over to Instagram. So let's uh, have a look at some questions that you have left me on there. The first question is from Alec Hoff. Um, they ask, what is the largest drawing you have ever done? Hmm, it's probably the 
Hong Kong drawing which I did when I was in college. I've got the time lapse on this YouTube channel if you want to have a look at it. It's one of the earliest videos that I uploaded. It was done on some A0 paper and I covered the entire thing with pencil work. I was drawing all of this environment. I was using Google Earth as reference and I was just exploring Hong Kong and the streets on Google Earth and then I was taking screenshots and I was drawing all of these buildings and all of this uh, scenery from Google Earth and I was combining it all together in one big sort of abstract piece. I was rotating the paper as I did it and I was just drawing on different angles and you know all of it came together and it was it was meant to represent the density of that city and, and then of course a few like a year later I got to visit Hong Kong and I spoke about this in one of the earlier episodes you know when I went there that had a big influence on my work and uh, I really want to go back there because it's probably the best place that I've ever been. But yeah, I'd say that's probably the biggest drawing that I have done. I mean, I did a drawing last year for architecture. I had done this drawing of a, a huge bridge across three A2 pieces of paper and then joined them together. And this bridge sort of incorporated this futuristic city. This city was based on this bridge and then I had that on my presentation board for my degree. Um, I had to scale it down though because it was too big so that was a pretty big drawing and that took me a while to do but that was thrown into Photoshop and manipulated so I don't really count that one um, but it was a, a good drawing I'm happy with how that one turned out but yeah drawings uh, you know I'd like to do some bigger drawings in future a lot of the time you know recently I've just been working quite small on like A5 sized pieces of paper because if I can get a drawing done then I can get some more videos out there and get the content up on, on YouTube and so I'm not going to be doing a A0 drawing for each episode of this right so um, but I would like to start a bigger drawing and just work on it over time and I think that's what I enjoyed most about these big projects like just spending a bit of time on it every day and then it sort of becomes part of a routine and then you get to see this drawing grow over time and within a few months you have this huge drawing which you have done and um, you know when I look back at that Hong Kong drawing there's parts of the drawing which I look at and it sort of brings me back to when I was drawing that it's, it's quite strange because if I look at a small fraction of it then it's like when you smell something it sort of takes you back to a time in your life you know it's quite nostalgic whereas that's kind of what happens to me when I look at a part of a drawing that I did years ago it sort of puts me back in that space when I was drawing it and at the time when I was creating that Hong Kong drawing, that was in 2016. And so I was going through some shit, you know, life was a bit tough then. Um, but that drawing was a way for me to distract myself and keep myself busy. I remember drawing that for hours, just throwing myself into it. And it was almost like an escape and I was sort of like putting all of my my feelings into this drawing in a way um, and so when I look back at that it almost allows me to sort of relive them and um, when I look at certain parts of the drawing it puts me back in that space when I was creating it and uh, yeah drawing is a drawing is an escape for a lot of people it's just like watching a, a movie or playing a game it's a way to um, forget about what's going on in in real life and just focus on what's in front of you you know and so that's what that's what it was for me. That was a, an escape. And so that helped me. I suppose it got me through the day. You know, that was something that I woke up and I started working on every day. And I did this big drawing and I actually ended up selling that drawing. And obviously I didn't really, I wasn't really as established, you know, for lack of a better word back then as an artist. And so I sold that drawing for about 220 pounds I think which isn't a lot considering how big it was and how much time I put into it but back then 220 pound I, I was rich <laughs> you know it was a lot of money and I sold it to uh, one of my friends one of my uh, this kid that was at the school and um, he bought it and uh, I took it around to his house and yeah he gave me some money for it and so that was like one of the first drawings that I ever sold at least more than for more than a hundred pound uh, and so I was happy with that but yeah I hope that answered that question I forgot what the question even was but I think we're 
moving on to the next one now. <laughs> okay, the next one is from Trisha May Clara. I'm not sure if that's it. It's just one word, but I think that's it. Um, they ask, what do you do when you procrastinate? Uh, well, I shouldn't procrastinate, but everybody does. And when I procrastinate, I'm usually just browsing YouTube and clicking on random videos and watching videos. That's how I procrastinate. I sometimes go on my phone and start scrolling on Instagram and stuff, but I don't usually have my phone nearby when I'm working at the desk. And so usually it's just going on the computer and uh, watching YouTube videos or I sometimes browse some websites, you know, the usual stuff. That's pretty much my form of procrastinating. Actually, another means of procrastinating, which I do quite often, is I, I eat food. And that sounds quite funny, but, you know, I sometimes walk to the kitchen and just start grabbing some food and eating it for the sake of it, even if I'm not hungry, just as a way for me to get away from what it is that I need to do at the desk, right? I'm just eating food for enjoyment and satisfaction rather than doing the work that I should be doing, uh, which is quite funny. But yeah, I, I try and stay on top of it now and I do that by keeping a list and I just work through the list. I've, I've spoke about that before. So let's move on to the next question. This one is from Samus Maximus. That is a cool name. And they ask, what paper do I usually use? I use Bristol board. Bristol board is really good. It's almost like card. It's a really good surface to draw on and it's smooth. You can apply a lot of pressure with the pencil without worrying about it ripping or anything, unlike printer paper. And it's pretty expensive, but it's worth the extra money because if you are going to be spending a lot of time working on a drawing, then you want to make sure that the drawing is going to be on something that is of high quality, right? And, and you don't want to be spending a lot of time doing something and then the paper starts creasing. I mean, that happens with printer paper and stuff. Printer paper is good for sketching and doing various things, but if you're going to be putting a lot of time into it, then you want it to be on some good quality paper. So I'd definitely check out Bristol board. It can be any brand. It doesn't really matter. I've tried a lot of them and they're all pretty much the same. So have a look at that and uh, I'm sure you won't regret it. Next question is from Ejan Sands. Man, I, I cannot pronounce these Instagram names, but the question is, for your drawings that are not from real life, do you plan out a sketch with reference images? Uh, sometimes, but it really depends on what it is that I am drawing. If I am drawing something that isn't from real life, then it's likely just from my imagination. In that case, I, I don't really need any reference images. But if I'm going to include something within that drawing that is from real life, then I'll just Google some images of what it is that I need to draw, and then I'll just refer to them and draw whatever it is that I am drawing in my drawing, but I'll make it suitable by placing it in the correct perspective along with everything else that is present in that drawing, if that makes sense. Reference images are useful. Every artist uses them. Just Google what it is that you need to draw and then you can take what you need and leave what you don't. Next question, MVP JDMs. They ask, how did you create your logo? So my logo is something that I came up with a few years ago before I started YouTube, but if you watch some of the earliest YouTube videos on my channel, you'll notice that that logo sometimes appears. And so it was only, I think, last year when I really started to brand the channel and my work with that logo, but the logo is essentially a D and a B next to each other with a circle wrapped around it. But that's quite subtle, you might not notice that, but I kind of like it like that. Um, it's just quite simple as well, and yeah, that's something that I decided to involve more into the channel uh, to brand myself. I sometimes place that logo within the images that I draw, and uh, I try to incorporate it in a lot of the stuff that I make so that I can say that it's mine, right? Um, there's a lot of logos out there that are quite similar to it, but that is the Dan Beardshaw logo, and when you see it, you know. So, let's move on to the next question. Nothing QB asks how to practice drawing ellipses. 
Ah, well, ellipses are challenging, but I'm going to be doing a tutorial in the perspective series where I cover them. And so I'm probably best off just answering this question in a, in a video where I cover them entirely. Uh, but the best thing to do is construct the ellipse within a square. And I will be sure to show that and demonstrate that within the tutorial. Next question. From Yi We China. Um, how many times do people tell you I can't even draw a stick figure? Surprisingly, I've never really heard many people say that. I might have read it in the comments before, but that's not something I hear often. I usually hear people ask what pencil I'm using. If I had like a, a penny for every time somebody asked me that question, I'd be a millionaire. I wouldn't even have to do YouTube or do any of this, you know, because I'd be set. People ask me all the time what it is that I'm using to draw when I put it in the description of every video. And I used to reply to that question and give an answer, but now I just tr tend to ignore it because, I, I don't know, I, I list it in the description and I always talk about it, so if you just look around on the channel a bit, I'm sure you can find it pretty easily. But for those that might be wondering, and for the last time, I'm using this Uniball Crew Turga Mechanical Pencil, and th there's no real specific reason why I use this. I remember a few years ago, I was trying to look for a good quality mechanical pencil, and I saw this, and it looked good. There was some good reviews, and so I ordered it, and I really enjoyed using it, and so it's something that I've just been using for years, uh, right from the start when I first started my channel. And so a lot of people have likely bought the same one because they see me using it when I create my drawings, which is good. You know, it's good to have some good equipment, but I don't usually like to place a lot of importance on the tools. I feel like sometimes people place too much importance on the tools when the tools aren't really what are responsible for creating a successful piece of art. I mean, there's some exceptions. When it comes to technology, you can always have a, a more powerful device which will assist you and make it easier for you, but it doesn't limit you too much. What limits you the most is a lack of experience and understanding and ability, and all of that can be improved without the need of expensive equipment. But of course it can be more enjoyable to work with equipment that is more reliable and that is of higher quality, and if you are taking what you are doing seriously, then it might be worth investing into some better equipment, but if it's just something that you are just getting into, then you don't really need to spend a lot of money on the expensive stuff, because at such an early stage, it probably won't make much of a difference. Uh, and there's that saying, all of the gear but no idea, that, that applies to a lot of people, and you know, it's, it's the same with other professions, sports, it, you see this all of the time, but um, I mean when I first started out doing YouTube, my first video was recorded with a, a webcam and I just made this sort of like a tripod, a homemade tripod out of wood and I just balanced the webcam over the, over the table that I was drawing on and I started filming and that's how I recorded that first time lapse which was uploaded on the channel and then eventually as I made more videos I saved up more money and I found that this was starting to be something that I was really interested in and then I invested into some more expensive equipment. I bought a, a DSLR and I bought a microphone and I started to improve the content and then as a result that improved and then I was able to invest into more equipment and that's how I did it. I didn't just go and buy a DSLR straight away. Like a lot of people do that. They feel like they cannot start YouTube or whatever it is if they don't have like a really good camera or some really good equipment. And that's not the case at all. People can still make some amazing things even if they are limited in what they have at their disposal. So yeah, I've completely gone off track in terms of the original question. So let's move on to the next one. So DMNP Zara, these names are not getting any easier, asks, what kind of things should I practice on to do big cityscapes like you do? Uh, when it comes to architecture and drawing environments, perspective is essential. Put a lot of attention to that and focus on that. Practice drawing some basic forms in perspective because then all you have to do is wrap them in detail and then you've got yourself a building. So maybe watch some of the perspective tutorials which I've been making 
do some practicing and uh, yeah perspective is a big one especially for cityscapes because a lot of the time it is just decorated uh, basic forms right so yeah the next question is from a ryan with a lot of underscores you seem to be so inspired by drawing brother how did you do that well you see ryan i am not inspired by drawing drawing is inspired by me i'm, j I'm joking uh I, I don't know drawing i'm not really inspired by drawing drawing is just the thing that enables me to create the artwork that i am inspired to create if that makes sense so drawing is not the thing that inspires me drawing is something i enjoy and without drawing i wouldn't be able to create the artwork as a response to the things that inspire me and so drawing is just an outlet for expression and that's the thing that i use as my outlet and many people do this through other things like making music films taking photos whatever it is all of these different creative fields you know they give people the chance and the opportunity to express themselves and people select which one appeals to them the most for me it was drawing and i think that was because it was easily accessible as a kid you know it's easy to find a pencil and paper and start drawing so that's something that i did and again like i've said before i just continued to do it but I was always open to all of these other creative fields. You know, I spoke about that in the previous episode. I tried all of these new things, but none of them ever really resonated with me as much as drawing did. Drawing became this obsession and then I attached my, sort of my character to it as a person, as an individual. You know, without drawing, it's hard for me to imagine the person who I'd be. I wouldn't be the person that I am today without drawing, without that means of expression and creation, right? Even communication, that's how a lot of artists feel like they can communicate what they want to say to the world. They put something out there, like I've said before, it's a product of them. It came from them. And so, yeah, that's probably why, you know, I've spoken about it before. It's healthy to try and separate yourself from your work uh, because you're just the... The machine that creates but i know that's harder to do than it is to say because in order to create something that is honest you have to put yourself into it and there's no way around it it's always going to be a product of you and criticism is always going to be there when someone says something about your work what are you going to do about it are you going to stop drawing forever no you're just going to carry on and get better and then i don't know prove them wrong or just ignore them because what other people think the outside reactions that's none of your business you create for yourself at the end of the day because you enjoy doing it so carry on doing that and have fun doing it and that's all that really matters and i feel like that's going to be the last question so this has been episode 10 of drawn to create and this has been going on for about over an hour and i need to go and lay down or something because my brain has turned into mashed potato but i hope you have all enjoyed this and if you have stayed with me for the whole duration of this then congratulations you've made it this far without falling asleep or maybe you have fallen asleep maybe i'm just now talking to you in your dreams which i don't know that's a new way to consume this podcast video series drawn to create whatever it is i don't even know myself but i know that i enjoy making them and i hope you enjoy these also in fact that can be a little experiment if you have made it this far then comment down below and let me know what you enjoy about this series because i don't know sometimes that stuff can encourage me to carry on doing these even when i'm going through that you know the phases of questioning whether i still want to do these because we all go through stuff like that we're always questioning what we are creating and whether we should be doing something but regardless just taking your time to watch and to listen is enough and i'm excited to see how this series will evolve over time i know that a lot of you have asked me to maybe get some guests involved get some guests on some of these episodes and i'll definitely consider it you know at the minute it's just a, a solo podcast but maybe in the future it would be nice to have some people here that i could talk to um at the minute it's just me sat in a room talking to a microphone which is a uh, 
a, a bit weird but again it's a way for me to put myself out there in a way which is hard to do when I make other content this is a lot more it's just a lot more laid back it's a way for me to connect with you as an audience as well and to communicate what it is that I usually don't get to say that often because seeing as this is long form I'm able to go off and talk about anything that I feel like talking about but yeah guests are something that I'll consider I'll have a look around I'm not really in contact with any other youtubers or creators on the site um, but I mean if there's people out there that listen to this and create content then uh, message me on Instagram or something and I'll have a look and maybe I can get some people on these episodes in the future um, also some of you have asked if I can get this on Spotify or on iTunes and I'll, I'll look into that um, one reason why I haven't done that yet is because I was unsure whether I wanted this to be solely on YouTube because I was going to change the way that I presented the footage on screen so that it would make it easier to watch or at least more entertaining to watch so you'll have to just give me a bit of time you know be patient because I'm still trying to figure this out and what it is that I want to do with this and yeah that's pretty much everything that I have to say I mean I've got patreon as well if you want to have a look at that and support the channel directly that really helps me out but other than that, I'm going to wrap this episode up here, so thank you again for watching. This has been the Q and A, and again remember to carry on leaving some questions in the comments because I will answer one of them in every episode. So yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.